really simple give this up simple drawing as usual you guys can see i've got my paper taped off at eight by ten inches and instead of drawing lines to mark that off with a pencil i'm just letting the tape marks do that it creates a very beautiful i don't know if you can see this it creates a nice beautiful soft edge right which really emphasizes the paint so if you want to do that you can I'd recommend you do it um let's get a pencil and is that just cellophane tape on the on the is that what you're doing it's um it's like painter's masking tape oh, okay and it's this skinny one it's like the half inch one so it's this guy oh you know what i just ran out of it okay. it's like this but white and half the size Okay. So you buy it at painting. It's a great one for painting, which is why people do it. Um, hold on. And I wanted to, I know this looks simple, but there's some places that one can get tripped up. So I just wanted to show you. Uh, now, normally I'm kind of taking the grid out of the equation, but now I think I just want to uh, I will often do two lines. So in this particular case, let's see, wait, I'm gonna have to probably do it here. Just to sort of keep, you know, keep things in check. So this is basically uh, 10 and a half inches or centimeters, whatever you wanna use. I'm coming here. I like to do this just to show where the bird is kind of in relation to the center of the paper. Cause I feel like, so you see how much of the bird is on this side versus this side. Can you kind of see? So sometimes it's helpful to, um, to, to, to do just two halfway points. In fact, I will often not even do the halfway, I won't even mark them in I'll just put like a little mark here in the center here, here, so I can just see like where the outside edges are here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. It just helps you kind of keep things. So this can be helpful, obviously. You have to kind of continue the bird a little bit. So in general, it's a good idea to find your halfway point. I wouldn't, because it's, um, watercolor and we want to make sure that the pen, there's not too much pencil lead right we like the pencil but not these grid lines because they're kind of hard to get rid of wait come here you here we go i would advise doing the same thing so mine is an eight by ten inch between the tape so i'm just doing a little mark here I'm not actually drawing the lines. A little bit mark here. And then I'll do this. I'll go, so this is eight, so I'll mark the halfway point. So this is the very center, right? Which is the same thing that's happening here. And then just so that I've got the marks. Wait a minute, don't do it like that. Don't do what I just did. Be more methodical. Four and four. Yep. So that um, you kind of know where these are, but we don't have this strong bar in the center. Can you guys see that? That I've kind of marked it very gently. Now it's a little hard to see. Here, there we go. Here, 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 and here. So that's something I like to do, particularly when I'm dealing with a really complex subject also there we go let's make that more straight on so now go ahead and sketch it's easy to get these curve lines wrong so remember oh i have pastel on my hands, which is wiping onto my watercolor. I don't want that either. Um, break your curve lines up into 
straight lines. See that one, two, same here. I want you guys not to get, I dare I say it, lazy with your drawing just because we're doing kind of a simple subject. In fact, the drawing is everything with uh, watercolor, if you haven't figured that out already, right? It's everything. Oh, here, and let me send a picture of this so you've got it. Here we go. I have it in color too, don't worry about it. That's. I can see that like one, two, yeah. I'm gonna miss maybe about here. That's where that is. Notice I'm not, once again, I'm not trying to simplify this curve because the shape of this beak has so much. So to just do a straight line like that, right? That's not really what's happening. That doesn't justify what's happening here. So pay attention. Notice it gets thinner. What a strange, awkward mouth is what I keep thinking. <laughs> strange. Kind of the gullet. There we go. Because mine's a little shorter, mine's kind of ending about here in the drawing. If you're using a longer piece, the body may go back a little further. We've got that. Seems right. <laughs> we'll see. I know it's not bending as much as I have it bending. I'm gonna have to fix that. I'm paying as much attention to the space around what I'm drawing. So I'm gonna make sure, I'm not just paying attention to this dark shape that I'm drawing. I'm also paying attention um, to the white shape above it, right? I wanna make sure I don't make this too big or center this in the wrong place. The eye kind of sits in here. Now this is interesting. Once again, it's light. It's blue, actually, very light blue. And the beak is, everything here is red. Hello. Yeah. There's a light part of the beak. Right, very distinct. In fact, this will probably be mostly no color. We'll leave it white. And then there's a dark part. And then there's a lot, another light line. So you see here's where you start to 
there's like this dark part. Ah. Then another teeny white line, which you want to sketch in because remember, we're trying to sketch in what we're not drawing, what we're not painting. That looks way too thick. There we go. I think that's better. There are some beautiful shapes in in this bird's feathers. There are these dark shapes in amongst the light. I love the geometry, the geometric shapes in the feathers because they're kind of striped. They're kind of blocky. Down. Yeah, 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 totally. Absolutely. Right. I mean, here you might actually want to try and capture a little bit of the edge with your pencil. I agree. It's trickier than it looks. Same up here. And then kind of here is the mid-tone. Here's where the darkest area comes in. Yeah, all of our, and our pencil lines are gonna be important here down here because our pencil lines are gonna be part of the descriptor. They're gonna be part of the shape forming. So it's important to get that right. Yep, then there's like a little, you're right. It's like square and then rounded. comes down like this. There's all these funny little white areas. Let's see, down here. Even in here, there are some stunning lights that you want to preserve. Mm. So I'm kind of missing part of the leg because mine's a little bit shorter than this space. You guys can crop this as you want to, but I still want you to stay. You can crop it as you want to with the caveat that I want you to stay in proportion with everything. I think Leah, you should just scrap the, the watercolor class and just sign this one and call it done. It <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Move oh my on. God, I long class. for that. You know, you know how often I love to do that. I love that. I have occasionally had somebody say to me, stop, just stop right now. It's true. It's kind of a beautiful, this guy yeah. is beautiful. Move on, do something great. else. Yeah, do the we, is great. That's true. Just leave him. Just leave him. Look at the color version of this. He's like, you can't even really see it here, unfortunately, because as usual here, I'm going to play with the lighting a little. Oh, I know. I turned this off. That's why I'm having such a problem. There we go. Ah, better, better. Okay. I was missing my main light. You can't really see how amazing this is. I'll send over the color version so you guys can see it. Um, it's beautiful. Look at his eyes, look up close. Look at his eyes, they're blue. 
they're deep blue. And then this is like these crazy pinks and oranges. And this deeply uncomfortable looking beak. <laughs> I'm just looking to see. So where we see the dark, okay. And then here I can see this better on the color copy. You can see it better on the color copy than you can. So I'm gonna put this up right now. There's kind of a, can you see this, this blue edge here? We're back here, things are a little bit more shaded. So try and get a little bit of that shape in, feather shape as you see it. You're not drawing every feather, you're more like looking at where the feathers. Yeah, the pencil is gonna be really important here. Block out a little tiny dot for the white of the eye. So I'm not doing every feather, but what I am doing is I'm looking at where there's a transition from light to dark. And I'm trying to create the feather line that I see here. Mm. So kind of here. I know it looks a little weird right now. We might add more pencil line. We might be able to do a lot. Here, let me take a picture. And you guys take your time with the drawing because <laughs> there's so much white here. I mean, we'll take time with painting, but most of our time will be spent mixing there you go. I'm taking a stab at Sandra's fishes. Nice. I'll be right back, you guys. Keep working. know about you guys I am entirely finding watercolor is putting me in a different mood is anybody finding that as you're working I'm curious to know it's very they're, they're frustrating in a different way well I, it just <laughs> it's just slow it's like it's like delicate. I would not describe myself as a particularly delicate person. That is not the word I would use. But I feel that watercolor, particularly as we're working with all of these lovely whites, you know, these lovely sort of white spaces. Um, yeah, I just find it. Oops. I just find it puts me in an entirely, a very meditative zone. Maybe I'll feel differently when we get into more colorful stuff, but which we will next week. I think meditative is a good word. Right? It, I feel different than when I do acrylic, when I do acrylic or oil. I actually feel different or pastel. Those all amp me up. <laughs> and this like totally... Totally like, I don't know, it just mellows, it just calms me down. So 
so notice I'm not drawing all the feathers, but I'm drawing the feathers, the biggest feathers that I can see. Because I think that these pencil lines will help us. And let me sort of highlight for you where the, the white areas are that you guys, we are not going to paint, right? That we're gonna leave. So let me do that, I think. So this shape. I'd say down to here, eh, this has a slight color tip to it. I'm highlighting the areas I think we probably, you don't wanna get any paint. And as we know, that's like hugely important to identify because you can lose that. Yep, everything else is gonna get some paint on it, but these areas are not. So here, I'm gonna take up, this is the white map. <laughs> map, oh, white areas. Hold on, I'll take a look at that in just a second, Jean, once I've got this to you guys. Okay. Okay. Pretty good. So try and clean up these areas with that gene um, uh, with the eraser, right? Because this is gonna be white. Yeah, I'm, I'm and trying, but it's not helping. It's hard, yeah. So do you see what I'm saying? This really requires, otherwise it looks pretty, pretty good shape. And go ahead and outline some of the other areas that are white, not white, right? It's super hard. I know, it's just a strangely... A watercolor paper sucks up the erasure marks. It does. Like the dirty what part. are you using? What are you using, by the way, out of curiosity? Arches? Uh, watercolor paper? Yeah, which watercolor paper? What's the brand? Canson. Oh, Canson's nice. Canson and Arches. Ar Arches is kind of the primo, but Canson is a beautiful brand, brand too, so it's a good one. Hmm. I should probably sketch these in two. There we go. And be careful, there's a little light. So there's these little in the eye, There, it's this sort of light blue rim around the edge of the eye. And then there's a tiny little white dot in the center of the dark uh, iris. Make sure you mark, uh, give yourself a little spot, a little triangle sorry, rectangle, square of, of white that's blocked off. Let's see. Looks in pretty good shape, Tashween. I feel like is that true? 
I think this has to come up a little bit higher, the eye here. Can you see how yours is coming down a little bit? There should be this, there should be less space up here than down here. So move your eye up just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, go look at it upside down if you want to. And this is the shape, right? That should be on the top. You'll see, I'm just being really picky now. There's nothing really wrong with the drawing. I'm just showing you, but that's the thing that you could do to improve it. Janet, what are you working on today? I'm coloring in one of my sketches. That's gonna be my next painting. We'd love to see it when you're ready. Sure. How's everybody's day been? Decent. Good. I've been to the gym for the first time in one year. Oh, how did that feel? Good, but I'm already feeling how the soreness is coming. <laughs> I got my second shot today. That was fun. Oh, how do you feel? Yay. I feel I feel fine right now. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> the first be shot fine. Is an easy one. <laughs> What's that? The first shot's the easy one. Oh, but I got my second one. I get one. She got her second one. Oh, yay. So then you'll be fine. I, I did not feel anything first or second, not even a sore arm. Isn't that interesting? It just wow. depends. Well, just like the damn virus, right? It affects yeah. some people. It doesn't affect others. It's crazy. And then I ordered... Um, uh, Windsor and Newton watercolors, and they oh. delivered literally right before class. So ah. Oh my yeah. God, you're going to love them so much. Speaking of, yeah. you I should, should get my. Lottery. It's your good luck day. I know. It's great. All right. Let me Got see. Got off work on time. That's always good. <laughs> As you said, I know, and I know, I totally appreciate that you guys are um, doing this. I'm going to put this up here and this down here. And let's see, here is my testing. I'm gonna put the testing down here. I know you can see it. <gasps> it all fits, my God, it all fits. Sorry. Um, where is my... You know what it is about watercolor? I just feel like watercolor brings us to our essential mark making really quickly. And that feels like religion to me. What it feels like is voice really, but like what I see is you can't avoid who you are by your mark making. Do you know what I mean? You can mask other things like acrylic, you can just go over to you to you get it the way you want it. But with watercolor, yes. who you are is right there. Right, you can't really avoid it. And there's something kind of restful and amazing about that. It looks great, Jillian, you're in good shape. I like your beak. I feel like you really got the shape of him. I really like this bird. He's I know, cool. he's really, does anybody know what kind of bird this is? No idea. No idea. I just don't know anything. An albino pelican. <laughs> it, Maybe. No, I don't think it's maybe. No, I I'm just kidding. Goes <laughs> deep into the sand or the or the mud to get whatever it's getting. Right, right. So it's probably what do they call that? Um, those areas that are tidal. They're like parked, like they change a lot. Oh, what estuary? It's estuary. an estuary dwelling creature, right? Uh, a, a area that changes all the time with the tide. So sometimes there's like. It's like 80% water and other times it's like no water. And there's a very particular type of, you know, life that dwells in that, that area. I was in a show once on estuaries. So I had to look it up and paint it. And there you go. Perfect, Tashmeen. Great, well done. Don't tell me you're now. You're now's your time to tell me you didn't do anything. 
I did. Thank you. I know you did. I saw it. <laughs> Fun fact, the Hudson River is an estuary. Oh, I that's true. It changes that much. Right. It's tidal. Up until about Poughkeepsie. Really? That far up? Mm -hmm. Right. And the Oregon coast is, right? So everywhere on the Oregon coast and all the rivers leading up to it are estuaries. Yeah, they're really interesting. Um, you know, if you think about it, you have to be a really interesting, you have to be a very versatile life form to be able to live in it. Something that changes that much. Okay, and let me look here. So I'm definitely seeing, I'm gonna try and look, my printout even doesn't show uh, the depth of the color here. So I'm really gonna be relying on the, I'll be looking a lot at our color photograph. Here it is. So definitely cadmium red is involved. So does anybody have a very light blue? What is the lightest blues you've got? Does anybody have like a turquoise blue? I, cer cer you have cerulean, which is a little different. Um, but me, if it, that's probably the closest thing you've got, right? It's kind of a bluish. This is actually, this blue here is not cerulean. It's like, it is an actual turquoise. And what's kind of neat about it is the reason I'm saying it is I think that blue is really going to be the blue of the eye. I'm just doing some testing here to see. Uh, maybe phthalo will work, but a watered down phthalo, but it really isn't. Yeah, so if you've got cerulean, try it. But if you've actually got a turquoise color, I would use that for the eye. Not that we're going there first, but anyway. Uh, let's see. So definitely cadmium red. <sighs> definitely yellow ochre. Definitely, I'm going to say burnt umber and burnt sienna. And then the grays will have choices. So mixing the grays will have choices. I'm gonna actually work on this bird's beak first. So I'll go. You guys keep drawing. If you're, I'm just kind of playing around with the colors to see what colors we're gonna use for the beak. Seems like there's a little bit of. Oh, okay. And if you're, I'm noticing that my colors are kind of dirty from the mixing I was doing last night. Like my burnt sienna is looking kind of green, probably because I pulled a lot of blue into it. So. I'm either going to pull it out completely or wipe it off, wipe off the top layers till I get back to the pure color. And Leah, you said that yours don't dry up. Um, in no, there, mine do dry up. Oh, they do? Yeah. Yeah, they'll dry up. Every, all watercolor will dry up, except for these kind of, this particular type called semi-moist, which won't dry up. But all of this, it starts out in the tube wet, but it'll dry up. Oh, sorry. You know, you said it, um, they didn't flake off. That's, I was mistaking it. Yeah. Because I got uh, an, air, an airtight thing too, and I'm just hoping yeah. they, the colors stay put. They should. They should. Um, although I just pulled off, having said they don't flake off, my burnt umber which has some old, old paint on the bottom did flake off because it's like super old. All right, let me see. Okay. Burnt Sienna. So I'm, I'm kind of refreshing my Burnt Sienna with new. So definitely Burnt Sienna, Cadmium Red, Yellow Ochre or Gamboge Yellow. Um, burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue. Let's start with those and see where we get. And then uh, if you've got a cerulean blue, we'll use cerulean. But if you've got turquoise or any other kind of really dramatic blue. Ah, yes, this is my burn umber. That's the problem.
Let's see. So as always, I've got my testing pan here so I can sort of, I can test colors, right? Lightnesses or darknesses of colors just to see. Uh, if I want to make this lighter, I dip it in the water and come back to get a lighter version. I don't know if you can see this, but there's still a little bit of wet. So I can pull a little bit of this color over here to create a medium. I can pull as long as the water is still, as long as the, as long as your testing mark is still, wherever you get the paper, uh, the stuff is still wet, you'll be able to add color. Um, and as usual, we're going to start with a really light wash in the areas. I'm going to work with, uh, in the beak, I'm going to work with my, um, with my, my, my bigger brush, my flat brush. But if, uh, because there are some areas and it starts out kind of thick. And I think we're going to do, is this what we're going to do? Cad red. Yeah. Yep. We're going to create this kind of brick red color with cadmium red and actually a little bit of viridian green. Not too much. If you'll notice, you see how much I put a tiny touch in there and it just completely, I, we want it to look more red than green, but we want it to be a little bit more bricky colored and very lightly. Yep. I'm going to go over the darkest red areas with this color. So can you see how light it is as I'm applying it? God, it looks completely fucking gray. Excuse me. It looks gray. It is not gray pink for God's sakes. All right, I'll take a picture of this really quickly once you can see it. But you can see the value of the color. And I'm, I'm, and I'm avoiding this top part of the beak, which might have a little color on it. And there's also a kind of little white line here. So I'm doing this kind of bricky color, which is a slightly shaded red, but it, you can still see it's pretty light. And I'm still leaving, oops, even that was a little bit too dark. Something that looks a bit like that. And I can actually also go around so it will still dry. I'm not even going all the way over the top of the eye. I'm gonna do something different there. I'm really sticking to kind of the shaded areas. So let me take a picture of this so you guys can see. Such, see, I just feel like it's like requires the precision of a surgeon or something. I don't know. I'm probably being overly dramatic. There we go. This shows a pretty good idea of the color. Yep, and then I'm gonna to go to my tiny brush in my lightest, brightest blue. Yep. After I finish that, I'm going to my tiny brush and adding very lightly. My lightest, brightest blue. Cerulean perhaps are kind of a watered down 
I'll take a picture of that. I'm using my very skinny brush, right? I'm going to start moving to my very skinny brush here. So obviously this dries much lighter than what we want. Interestingly, I'm almost looking at the background and wondering if we should get the background in after the beak just to get the shape of the body. We may, we will, we may well do that. Are you all there? Can I hear you? Can you hear me? Can somebody say something? Okay, great, great. I can hear something. You know, I always turn these dang things off by accident. I heard turn off the volume by accident. We're meditating. Um, yes, I love it. I know the energy is like completely, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's like, it's, it's very, it's very focusing. It's kind of beautiful, really. It feels religious to me. I know that sounds crazy, but it does. It, it feels like a religious watercolor feels almost religious to me because you can't avoid who you are. Um, I'm mixing burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to create a dark for the, the dark of the eye. I'm working around this little white area. as best as I can. And there's a kind of a dark outline around the edge of the blue. I'll show it to you in a second. There's a little bit of a dark outline up here and then into these feathers here a little bit. Actually, there's kind of this dark outline down there like that. So I'll show you what I did now. <laughs> crazy little subtle movements. And then I'm going to take some of that ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Notice I'm mixing it down here in a different space so I can keep my reds kind of more ready. <coughs> I'm just looking to see where I can add more dark. There's kind of a dark area here, this kind of dark line. The darkness gets kind of thicker. Notice I'm not trying to do this all at once. Because there's a white area I'm trying to preserve as well underneath. I'm not using much water, it's mostly dry brush. There we go. Let 
and then there's an and then it gets it's it's dark again kind of from here there's a light area and then another dark area there so there's a little light area in between Yeah, and I think to keep ourselves from going crazy, we're going to need to do the background. I think the background is going to be next. The background is mostly brown. So you're going to mix brown with blue. I'm almost out of burnt umber. Hold on, I need to get a scissors. when I get to the ends of my paint tubes sometimes just to make them work a little longer I'll actually trim off the bottom so I can squeeze out the last of the paint yeah there's very little left here but just enough the last of my burnt umber. I might be totally out. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to mix burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue to make a nice rich dark. Don't try just putting brown down there. It'll look silly, ridiculous, I might even say. Uh, your, your brown needs to be modified with a, um, with a, uh, as a, a compliment to make it look more earthy. And then notice I'm kind of coming along the edge in a slightly ragged way where there are rather ragged feathers. So you see, I'm feeling like I can't really get to the depth of the bird unless I have the dark. And I'm going pretty dark because I know this area is really dark. So I'm not worried so much. What colors did you say you were using? Burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you need a bit of the complement. That's my sort of standard dark mix for nature. <laughs> standard nature dark mix. I have a standard glaze too, which is really gorgeous. So it's got, we've got some of the red and the brown showing up. But see, if I just put uh, brown like this, it just, uh, it looks kind of flat. And if you want to, you can kind of create a, let your, you, you can go more solid or you can kind of let your watercolor you're, you're going to go very dark around the edge of the bird and around the edge of the beak, but you can get a little lighter and more raggedy, right? Because there's this kind of dark and light spottiness happening, or you can just let your watercolor brush create that. Do you see how I'm just kind of getting it naturally? See how it's just happening naturally? So you can try for it or you can just let it happen. 
either way, it probably will. So where the beak is, I'm going very smooth. Right, because that's a hard line. I'll go back in and do more work on the beak, but I want that to be very smooth. But up here, where the feathers are, I might actually kind of try and show a little bit of, not a lot. Now this is in my way. I might just show a little bit of feather See how I'm doing this little bit of white. Try not to do it totally evenly. We don't want little soldier feathers. <laughs> but you see how now all of a sudden the bird is really coming out. So the background is really playing a significant role in uh, this watercolor sketch because so much of the bird is white. Oi, that's not blue enough. There we go. Okay, so yeah, kind of a little bit raggedy up here, down here, and up here. Everything else can be smooth. All the other edges can be smooth. We may have to go over this area again, but at least it kind of defines the bird for us. What, what was your brown again? Uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're done. <laughs> Everybody stop. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, tomorrow, by the way, I, I've decided to pick something a little challenging if you want to join in, but I think it's really beautiful. We're going to be doing this tomorrow. Ooh, yay. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, whoa, right? <laughs> Sandra, I know I showed it to Sandra and I, and I said, what do you think? Is it too hard? And she goes, well, yes, but that's no reason not to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I just decided, let's try it and see how it goes. It's just such a pretty. She would say that. Yes. She's really, Sandra's really, I've, you can, you'll can you really appreciate Sandra's really coming along with watercolor. She's ahead of us because she's been doing it for the last I don't know, two months or something like that. Um, and you'll see, she's definitely getting, she shows, she shows how one we can improve. And she's like, she's trying to put in to paint every day. Mm -hmm. Did she join you yesterday, uh, this morning? Yep. Excellent. Always. Don't forget that uh, Diana, runs a little open studio on Thursday mornings, our time, lunchtime for you East Coast people, evening for Europe and India. Tosh Ween, what did you do with your time before you started coming to classes? <laughs> she had the life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told you, I don't know if I told you, but it was my New Year's resolution to do one hour of art every day. That's awesome. <laughs> so this is perfect. And you've been, have you been doing it? Have you been making it? Yeah. Um, maybe I can show you. I remember on, on Sunday, I went to my friend's wedding. Yeah. So I also like, had to draw her, her dresses. So I've been doing oh, that. how fun. That's so cute. 
you're getting so much artwork at you're good. Uh, it's uh, I, and I can see it in your results. I can see you're putting, I just want to comment that I see the time you're putting in and you are really getting results. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really see it. It's great. Everyone is so inspiring. So thank you for sharing your work. Yo. All right. So when you guys are done here, now we can return to this bird. And what I see about the shadows, we're gonna work with the grays, the shadow areas of the bird a little bit in here and down here. What I can see is they look kind of purple or bluish. So my instinct, remember with shadows, we're always mixing a bit of the complement. So we could try two different uh, shadow colors. We could try mixing ultramarine blue and quinacridone red to make a purple and then adding a touch of gamboge or burnt umber or sorry yellow ochre so yellow right um you could try that gray and see if you like it here so i will mix it uh put it on the testing paper and then show it to you so purple and yellow basically or you could try ultramarine blue, cad red, and cad yellow. See what happens. Or you could try ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So the idea just being that this is a kind of blue tinged gray. So this is the kind of purpley. This is, here, I'll take a picture of it. Um, alt blue plus quin red plus uh, gamboge or yellow ochre. I particularly like the gray that this mix makes. I use it a lot. I mean, I try to look at, so here we go. Um, remember I'm doing this on just regular paper, so it's kind of coming through and showing bluer, darker than it really is. Um, and then there's ultramarine blue. Here, hold on. I'm gonna clean this tray off. Take my blankie, clean off this tray and put ultramarine blue. Actually, I have an orange here. So let's see what happens if I just grab straight orange. Ultramarine blue and orange. Okay, and that creates, here, I'll show you what that looks like. I don't know, it's pretty too, it's different, it's greener. I've just done the layout of my fishes, I just sent it over, it's- Okay, yeah. I'll take a look at it in Super one moment. Basic. No panic. Yes. Super. Basic. Super basic. Okay, give me one second and then I'll be, and I'm gonna take a look at it. And then um, we're gonna try ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and lighten that. So we'll try those. Those are my suggested grays, gray options. Ooh, that's actually kind of pretty. This is ultramarine blue. So these are all compliments. Do you guys get that? Every single one is a compliment mix. So I've just sent you three. You should play around with them. I probably, and no, let me see. Let's see. Oh, Diana, that's already really fun. Oh, I mean, blue and orange. It pops. Yeah. It's like so poppy. This is the great example of what happens with complementary colors. Look what complementary colors do to each other. This is already vibrating. I like to say it's vibrating, like it's popping, meaning it's jumping out at you, even though it's on a flat surface. So 
it's vibrating, it's pulsating because next those colors next to each other really make the other colors pop. All right, I think I'm gonna go with my sort of purpley yellow. Let's see, let's get a little bit more. Uh -huh. All right, I'm gonna try. purple and yellow. So I'm going to come in here with a very light layer. Can you see how light this is? So this is what it should be much lighter than your background. Much, much lighter. Even if you end up making it darker later. Right now, and I'm letting the kind of color run out as I come down here. So it becomes even lighter still. bringing that down in here. Now there's a dark kind of area down here, but that looks browner. So I might actually go to the burnt sienna ultramarine blue and peep that on the brown side. Notice I'm testing. I don't want to go too dark. Normally, you know me, I'm like, let's go dark. Let's not be afraid of dark. Dark is beautiful. But here, you have to be able to layer in your darks. I might even bring a little bit of that color up here, oh, just a little. Um, so here, let me take a color, of let me take a picture of this. Hey, uh, uh, Janet, have you heard from the Art Students League yet? Oh, I don't think I'll, I, I, I just turned it in on Monday. Okay, so you weren't here for a while. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We can go to these darker areas. So these darker areas down here look a little bit more on the brown side. So I'm gonna continue working with this uh, burnt umber and burnt, uh, sorry, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna combo slightly on the brown side because that's really what it looks like is happening down here. Is that too dark? I think it's okay because it's really dark down here. There we go. See how dark even this looks and it shouldn't it really, it's not that dark, but it's just, ah. And of course what's happening here is that this is lightning. So I'm kind of going back in with another layer of dark. picture of that. Yeah, so it's interesting, really, the darkest parts of the bird, the, the sort of upper parts of the shadows of the bird are really very blue and cool. And these ones down here are murkier and browner. So it really does require two different grays up here. What is the gray at the top again? I wrote, I wrote it down for you and sent it over. I don't see it. Uh, I sent it on the thread. Did I not send it? Yes, I did. It's, uh, I did not, did I not send it? Oh, for heaven's sakes. You're right, I totally didn't send them. I did them and I didn't send them. Here, hold on. I'll take a picture right now. But I, I'm sure I did. That's weird. Okay, there's that one. Sorry about that. Maybe I got so into making them, I forgot to send them. <laughs> or we can blame technology. Well, I see the picture here. That's what's weird. <laughs> 
I'm like, I took the picture and then didn't send it. What the heck? There we go. The color will be up and to the left on each of those. There we go. So that top one is kind of a purpley blue, bluey mix with some yellow, you know, with the yellow in it. Because it really does look, I hope I didn't go too dark there. Blanky, blanky, blanky. Where's my blanky? Mm -hmm. There we go. Better. Even that. Fortunately, it also does dry a little bit lighter, so don't forget to test. I know this looks kind of sloppy and messy right now, particularly as this area comes in, but we really do need to go, we really do need to be careful not to get too dark right away. We can get darker. Yeah. And kind of define some of these areas on our later layers. Yep, and then this guy. I kind of misshaped the back. So now I'm going in with some of my background to see if I can fix that. Yeah, that actually helped a little bit. And then once you lay those in, you can start going back and darkening like kind of, there's like a dark line. Whoops, that's really dark. Blanky, blanky, there we go. I'm still dipping. Oh, even that's still too dark. Although it's pretty dark down here. See how it's quite dark down under here? So see how I'm kind of layering in those darks, trying to create this soft edge. So you see how I'm starting to layer in, yep, kind of like that, the darker colors, but pretty lightly still. I still want that control. Oi, see, too dark. Blanky, water, testing. There's almost like a 
this diagonal dark line, which is a shadow where the feathers fall over the legs, I think, kind of like this. It's a little darker in there, but not be careful because here, I'll take a picture. Oh yeah, it's starting to look better. <laughs> but it's so crazy subtle, right? Like there's all these areas that we're not painting. And then, then we can come back to the beak and try to add some of the colors to the beak. So here, I'll stop at this point. You guys catch up or tell me when you're ready. Yeah, see, you guys are much quieter. <laughs> like when, or maybe everybody's just gotten quieter and more mellow in the last couple of years, but. Yeah, I'm still not seeing where you sent over the colors for the gray. Hold on. It's the, it's the photos that look like swatches, sort of. Yeah. Like test. They're just they're at the very they're at the very beginning. Oh. Or sorry, they're at the very end. They're the last things I sent over. I wrote down like this is one. I am not seeing that. You put it in the East Coast Art Class? Club? Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you see Diana's uh, fish? 
I see her fish. I don't see much. Go after. under Diana's fish. There's like six more photos after Diana's fish. They're in here. I've only got like two more. Oh, well. That's weird. I know. Okay. I'll send it again. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't download if you're, yeah. it just happens. Sometimes it takes a while, but. Yeah, let me, I'm gonna forward all of them again and see if they go again this time. There you oh, go. There we go. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. And I've been having like all kinds of ridiculous problems with my, um, internet lately that I didn't don't normally have particularly in the in the evening it's hard to get the texture in his head don't try too hard okay <laughs> you should be not doing too much of the texture if you're jumping into that you're, you're, uh, you're, it's gonna, you're gonna be able to, you're, it's, it's less is more. I guess let's put it, let me put it that way. Let me move into, we need to do more work on the beaks. There are these kind of beautiful bright reds. I'm looking at cadmium red and maybe grabbing a little bit of yellow ochre in there to make it even oranger. Testing, yeah. So I'm coming over the top here with just cadmium red and a yellow of some kind, kind of an orangey color. We want to not mix any complements in with this. We want it to be brighter. Don't try to draw every feather. The only place you should be doing that is where light meets dark. And even then you're going to make yourself, it's not going to, it's, you're going to overdo it. It's the hard thing about watercolors. People are like, no, no, but I wanna, I need to do more, I need to do more. And then you're like, nope, oops, <laughs> I did too much. So see how I'm taking the red and I'll take a picture of this so you guys can really see it. Um, and putting it in here at the top, it's kind of brighter, it has a brighter look about it up here, kind of along this edge. Comes down to, so it's over the top of the eye. It's this red that is not sullied by um, uh, other things here. I'm going to take a picture of this. Here. This is where I got to. And now I'm going to go back to mixing red and a little bit of green. Might even try Alizar and Crimson and green. Let's see what happens when I do that. Oh yeah, now we've got this nice deep. So down here, as we're getting darker, we're staying with red, but we're adding a little bit of green to get the kind of darks and really push forward um, the brights, the bright reds. So I've mixed uh, Viridian green with cadmium red to get this kind of dark color. And I'm putting it in here here, kind of down in here. I'm not putting it over the top part of the red here. And then I'll kind of draw it down into here. I want a little bit more red in this mix. So even though there's green in it, it still is fairly red, pretty red. I'm going to go back in and make the eye a little bit darker by mixing 
burnt sienna or burnt umber and ultramarine blue to make it dark. I'm gonna make my eye just a little bit darker around that white spot. See how I'm bringing this red, this sort of shaded red. I'm still saving a, a little light area. So I'm, we have like, here, I'll take a picture to really show you. Oh yeah, you guys got to see Gina's latest self-portrait, which is really wonderful. She's coming a long way. slightly yellow down at the base here. So I'm grabbing a little gamboge, maybe with a touch of red in it. Slightly yellow down here. Stops about here and becomes white. I can see I need to clean up the edge and I, on a couple of places of my beak. So Jillian, it's not really, as you notice, it's like less is more with watercolor. So it's not about trying to draw every feather that will just, A, you'll make yourself insane. Um, it's about going to edges. I didn't try, I was just like at that point and I was like, like, how, yeah. like, how does that happen? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you could, right? Like you could, and there are probably people who do, but in my mind, you don't. Right. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God, you'll make yourself nuts. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Let's not make our, I'm at the, I, I'm definitely of the, uh, the belief that we should not make ourselves nuts. And then I'm coming back down here with some more of that red, right? To really darken. And truth, it kind of looks like this bottom white part is just lighter red so I could probably go in with the red I'm going to do one more level of dark so it's taken me probably three tries to build up my, to feel confident enough to go as dark as I really want to go on that line, that sort of dark line in the middle of the beak. Now I'm like, okay, I think I can do it. Now there's a few little lines up here too, like, whoa, no, too dark, too dark. There's tiny little bits of gray. Let's see, Diana. All right. Diana's already put in her hours. Okay, we'll see you later. This is looking great, Diana. Looks beautiful. Let's hope it will be, but I, I can't add anything now because it's, right. it's still dry. Everything is too wet. Yep, you got it. It looks wonderful. And you have put in your hours today, young lady. Go get your wine and your dinner. <laughs> yeah, I will. Deserve that. We'll see Actually, you. I have to work 
actually I have to put in a few hours of work too. Oh, yeah, so not yeah. fun. All right, we'll have that fun. Happens, we'll that happens when you paint too much. That's right. <laughs> bye bye. Right, we'll see you tomorrow, dear. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Um, it's I see a little dark line kind of under here. So I, I, I'm i seeing little areas. So Jillian, instead of all the feathers, I'm just looking for a couple of, not too many, probably that's it. And what I'm, are you? What I'm are just you taking the first, uh, the sort of purpley mix okay. with my light. Got it. Coming in here. And just a little bit though, not too much. I could already feel myself starting to overdo it. So. Okay. Uh, I'm pulling it out a little bit here too, a little bit of gray here. Um, and then I went a little bit darker in this line here. And then up here, I, I really, there's a kind of, really a purpley bluey. Tone. So I'm trying to get a kind of light bluish. Not so gray, but more blue in here. So I'm trying to go over that gray with a little bit of, ah, oh, too dark. Don't do what I just did. Right, a little bit of bluish. because I know it'll be kind of blending with the gray. Yeah, it's really easy to just go too crazy here. Now I can also try to get my white very white. My, it gets a little white on my brush, give myself a dot there. Sometimes that'll work sort of re-emphasize some of the whites. You can sometimes do that, but often it'll look sort of weird. I was thinking that like, um, I need to get a little bit bluer and darker. So you see, I'm kind of like gradually laying in my blue. It gets pretty dark back here. So I'm brushing that in over in a few key places that are feather shaped. I might also go in with a little bit of white and see if I can streak in white. Yeah, the white won't really work here. Once you go too dark, you just cannot go. I'll not let you go back. So you see, I'm like, I'm really only paying attention to the texture might be able to do this with white. There's kind of these, these feathers go in lines this way. And so I'm trying to find a few key lines to get some edges, but really there's still very little edge happening. If I try to edge it like this, I'll do it really quick and then take it out. Like if I try to get like if I try to do this, right? That just, um, oosh, off, off, off. That emphasizes things too much. So that's where your pencil lines kind of become crucial to the process. I could add in a few shadows, but putting too much strength into the feathers will be distracting unless you're gonna paint every single one. And I know y'all don't wanna do that. Interesting. This may be. Uh, I can see that down here, it's got a very light, light, light gray bit. And there's a bit of 
darker gray down here in the feathers. But that's kind of it. I'm not sure I would want to do anything else to this on mine. I want to see it. You could try it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying I think this may be as far as I want to go. Maybe darken my darks. Here, I'm going to take a little close up of the back. So I'm always talking to you about not painting every feather, not painting every leaf of every tree, right? Not, not painting every edge, really focusing on where the edges are. I think watercolor just takes that to the nth degree. This is all we're really focusing on is where this sort of darker patch hits this lighter area. I mean, there's a tiny little, like when I look up here, let's see if I can add it in without it being too crazy. There's a little bit of that happening, but not, just don't want to get too crazy. That looks lovely, Tashween. I feel like this medium is really working for you. It's great. Yeah, I think you're done. I love what you've got going on down here. I love this kind of orangey. I love the edge you've got there. I love the kind of orangey bit. Let's see, Addy. Oh, uh, Addy, that's great. You could get a little bit darker back here, right? On your, and down here. So in here and here, this kind of little crescent moon at the base of him, you could get a little bit darker. Wow. That's great, you guys. I know it's this meditation, less is more. <laughs> I remember Sandra saying, oh, I don't wanna do white. And I'm like, you totally wanna do white because that means like your job becomes a lot less difficult. Like this whole swath. And somehow with watercolor in particular, white, the white shapes really set off the brushwork. Can you see that? So these swaths of white, if, if you overpaint and you lose your white spaces, um, often it's easy to overdo watercolor. I'm kind of struck by that. Um, I'm just trying to see Toshween. You know what I would do, Toshween? I would go over with one more layer on the outside, darken this, and then I think you're done. And if you wanted to change the color, maybe purple it a little bit, you could mix, you know, you could sort of go over with a purple, I think that would look really pretty. It doesn't have to be brown. Great work. Addie, I have to credit you. You're doing, you're really keeping up with the grownups. Are you enjoying it? You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these classes have been amazing. I'm so glad. The next Emma, in, in eight years, you come to me and I'll hire you, okay? Just like I just did with Emma. Okay. Keep working. Wow. <laughs> I kind of love it. Let's see. Oh, Jean, nice. So a little bit dark down here. Can you go over with a little bit of water down here at the mm -hmm. base and just pull that off a little bit? I absolutely love what you've got going on with the head. Ha! It's great. The motions of here, the background and the little areas, this is really, this is phenomenal. This is great brushwork and very Jean. <laughs> I like it. No, it's your mark making, you know, like it's your mark making. So just be careful. I think you went a little too dark down here. So see if you could add some water to your brush and then take your and put it on and then see if you can pull off just a little bit. Sometimes that'll happen. This is great. I also really love the colors in your beak. Nice, Thank you. nice work. 
Yeah, Jean, I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of uh, maturation of your brushwork. Um, I feel like watercolor is really giving that to you. Do you know what I mean? Like, but also you've been doing it long enough. So now you're really getting something out of the process, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? You're able to get more out of the process. It's wonderful. You guys are doing great. I freaking love them. Let's see. Yep, nice. Now, Tashween, if you want like instant satisfaction, go ahead and pull off the tape. Oh, okay. I'll do mine. Look, see? <laughs> oh, it looks like a finished painting. Wow. Right? Look at that. It's like framing it. I mean, it looks one step better even when you frame it, but when you take off the tape, it's like the big reveal. I like it because it there's no pencil marks to disrupt you. It's this is all paint, but you're really seeing this paint line. Here, whoops, I forgot. Froze. There we go. Like that. Look at how nice that looks. And when you take that blue off, you're going to be like, oh, it looks so good. So I recommend to all of you to try that. Give that to yourself. <laughs> this little extra like frame just to feel like I'm done. I did it. Leo, we got some sad news last night. No, what? Well, it's it's, it's not really sad. It's just we're bummed in the bunker. Oh. Katie, Katie isn't going to model anymore. Why? Is she busy? She's trying to become a fashion model. Yes, I saw that. She's taking it. I know she stopped like doing drawing classes and everything. Well, she said she stopped doing drawing because she realized that she learned she, everything she needed to learn. No, she wasn't sure she was doing it for herself or just for like attention getting. She wasn't really <laughs> sure. She wasn't really sure she was doing it for enjoyment. She, for enjoyment or not. Right. Boy, she did a great, I feel like she did, she did just, she did wonderfully. I mean, she deserved attention. But we <laughs> love drawing her. So I know, much. she's so great. I get it, though. I get it. I totally get it. Well, that's too bad. You have Brie, though. Yeah. I have another couple models I could send your way if you're looking for new blood. We are, actually. Um, I will send them. Way. I'll send um, them. Brie is moving back to Portland. She is. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, okay, great. I'm going to have to have her over for lunch. Maybe I'll have her pose for figure drawing when we get. Oh, yeah. See, look at that. <laughs> so satisfying. <laughs> so satisfying. It's wonderful. Great work, you guys. This is awesome. So great, so great. I'm assuming you guys don't. Do you guys need to look at my 
uh, my example anymore? Or are you feeling pretty on top of things? I feel like you've got him. Jillian. Oh, wonderful, Jillian. Gorgeous. Ha! Love. Oh, my God. Okay, so I think you really nailed it here and up here. Don't do any more. And I love the, the way you're brought in some of the feather shapes by leading the whites. Excellent. Excellent. So um, the biggest thing I would do here is do a light red wash over here. And then I would darken again, go over one layer in the background dark. I wouldn't touch anything else. Okay. The, yeah. Oh, and I need to do his leg. Oh yeah, just make his leg sort of about this value. It's kind of like this value. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Really, now I want you guys to see how, and by the way, Jean, like it, great. I think you did, you got it, you, you got it. I want you to see how much personality these birds have. <laughs> There is, absolutely, everybody is taking, you know what I'm saying? Everybody is using their own mark making. Jillian, you have such strong, uh, I, I just love your, I mean, you know, your brushwork is really strong and it's, it's just interesting. I often am like, really, that's it? That's all we have to do, right? Like, you know, I'm also thinking about all those feathers. Oh, yeah. Janet. Oh my God. So nice. I love it. Is this going to be the next painting? Yeah. Oh, fuck, yes. I just loved this pose so much. Oh, my God. And she's sitting on a toilet. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, and she she had her camera outside the bathroom door. So, like, the doorway framed it. It was the coolest pose ever. Oh, my <laughs> God. I love it so much. I Can love she it. Cashewin, that eye is amazing. Yeah, she really got it. She had the right colors. Look at how big her white circle was, right? Like she mm -hmm. made it bigger to emphasize it, which is something you kind of have to do with, um, with watercolor, right? We got to have to push the differences. You guys, you great, you guys knocked it out of the park here hold on let me remove this spotlight and look at you all in gallery view just to tell <laughs> every single one of you you nailed it bravo nailed it um and each one is so different like and nobody overpainted and your grays are beautiful and each gray is slightly different, right? Depending on your, and they all have such texture and form. It's really wonderful. So whoever's feeling like ready to take on the challenge, let's try this guy tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if you can, but if you can, I think it's gonna be hard, but actually maybe not so hard. Maybe easier than we think. Um, honestly, great. It's really great. I just thought everybody handled this with such a light touch. And Janet, that's just crazy. So good. <laughs> it just makes me chuckle. <laughs> and Tashween, right now you look like you're in a Caravaggio. You look like a Caravaggio painting right now. Because <laughs> it's all dark. <laughs> what is it? The word is... Yep. Isn't there a word for that? Um, I just like to call it, a, have you seen, Car you know Caravaggio, right? How all of his figures are coming out of these darks. His David in the bath, his like, yes, they're all like, yeah, he was all drama, 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 that guy. I mean, truthfully, those paintings that he made were like modern day TV. You know, that was the only, that was the entertainment people have was going to church and seeing those. He was. He was the HBO of his day. He was the HBO of his day and crazy as a who as a loon, but like very, very gifted. All right, you guys. So tomorrow uh, uh, we're gonna do some kind of still life challenge and drawing on Saturday. Uh, we'll do those, uh, we'll do, uh, Marie's doing another water feature on Sunday. Um, 
and then I'll be uh, taking us. We're going to spend a little bit more time with the pairs, just a little bit more time. And then I'm going to set up a still life in my studio for you guys to paint or draw, whatever you want to do. So you can join on Sunday for that. And next week, I think we're going to... I might take us to landscape with watercolor. We'll see. I think that might be fun next. So, oh no, you know what? We're gonna do like colorful things. So I do want you to try lemons, which is really always fun and very satisfying. Uh, lemons and oranges. Um, and then we'll go to, uh, then we'll go to still life. So, or then we'll go to landscape. So, and then cityscape and we'll do it all. <laughs> all right. All right, you guys, we'll see you soon. Great work, Bye. everybody. Good to Bye. see you. Bye. Take care.